So welcome back to API Days uh, Singapore. I'm really excited about this track. Uh, this uh, connecting industry track is going to draw together uh, lots of elements of the, uh, the, the real world, uh, joining the, the real world to the digital world. And uh, it goes back a little bit to uh, my, my bachelor's degree is actually in electronic engineering. And uh, there are a, a number of engineering aspects uh, here to uh, to the to the sessions we're going to have, uh, so we're we're going to hear about uh, electrical power distribution. We're going to hear about um, heavy engineering equipment, uh, the supply chain for bulk chemicals, and we're also going to hear about uh, trade. So we're going to start with um, our first presentation from uh, O'Neill Disaniake. He's uh, the VP International Business at Schneider Electric. Uh, welcome, O'Neill. Thank you, John, and good evening, good afternoon, good morning to you from wherever you are joining us today. And it's my pleasure to join uh, Happy Day Singapore. As John said, I'm Onil Disanaika, working for Schneider Electric. Uh, in the last five years, a little over, I've been driving the transformation in the electrical distribution channel partner network and leading the power, redefining the power distribution. Uh, Thank uh, Anil, can we just check that we, we've got your um, deck up here? Okay. All right. That's that's all clear now. Great. I'll all right. Thanks. Thanks, John. So the format of this event itself is a result of digital transformation because we are all joining digitally what could have been an in-person uh, event. And it's my pleasure to kickstart the industry track and speak on the topic digital transformation in industry. Transformation is a huge and a wide topic. I'm a strong believer that if the transformation that one desire to achieve, we need to break it into key pillars and then go into focus areas. If not, the intended transformation would not reap the full benefit of the set objectives. Taking this approach to this session, I will speak on the transformation in infrastructure within the industry. Infrastructure within a given industry too can split into several pillars, building or site electrical network, building automation, process in a manufacturing sector, IT system in a given installation, so and so forth. Further to my previous point, taking this pillar called infrastructure I'm going to speak on the electrical distribution system within the industry as the focus area. How digital in the area transforming and redefining electrical distribution system. So this is to set the context of this session. And if I bring up my first slide, I hope uh, slides are working, yeah. So let's look back briefly to the past. The power distribution has a long and steady history. It begins in the late 18th century with the works of pioneers like Edison. And, law, and for a long time, this technology that provides the world has been very, very stable. However, in the past couple of decades, the demand for power, especially globally, has risen exponentially various factors within the increase in a global economy, massive urban migration, everybody wants to become part of the city, the digitization for both business and home life. What more in a time like this? Because mind you, the aspect of growth has become surpassed all and every forecast due to COVID-19 on digital and digitizing the home life as well. And still on top of all this element, the growing world population is still in the growth area, especially in Asia. So the old power systems simply aren't enough to serve our needs of today. The rise of demand for power increases at the same time that the technology allows us to produce and consume power in different ways. A smarter way as an individual and also smarter way collectively as a society. So these are the rapid changes that we see it's happening. So let's recap some trends you may have stumbled upon in the past with various sources. And then when we come across such numbers, one could ask, so what? 
Why should I care? How does it impact me? Yes, the world will be more electric. So that means power outages and the quality will impact even more. Yes, the world will be more digitized. And we have just seen it in our very own eyes. This driving amazing new possibilities with greater risk of cyber attack. We cannot forget about that. Yes, the world will be more decarbonized. Cheapest energy is the energy you do not use. And we know top of the agenda of each corporation, each country, sustainability. So sustainability will drive new usage and new type of energy as well. Yes, the world will be more decentralized. That means we need, so or the need for the demand side in MVLV network automation. I'll touch that a little bit when we go further. Before we're going to look at what is, how we're going to look after transformation, let's look at what are we going to transform and or what is in the middle of transformation. The traditional power distribution model is pretty simple. It starts with a single source of power generation like hydroelectric, coal, nuclear, so and so forth. That connected to a high voltage transmission system which allows for the generated power to be transported safely over a distance. This transmission system in turn connect the distribution system to the distribution system, which provides power to an area and connect to the service entrance of a building or the facilities, whether it may be medium voltage or low voltage, depending on the facility. Inside that facility, the user's own electrical distribution system will then convey this utility power into final loads. As I said, it's pretty simple, the traditional power distribution model. Now let's look at how this power distribution model is changing or keep evolving. Unfortunately, that simple system we, we just saw just doesn't cut it anymore. As you know, in the new digital economy, there is a massive changes in how power is generated and used. And this impact the power distribution system enormously. Alternative energy sources and advance in technology means that power is coming from multiple different places. And consumers aren't just consuming energy anymore. They are producing it too. Many facilities now have renewable power system like solar or wind or other on-site generating assets, which they are using for both backup power in case of a utility outage or and to reduce energy consumption during a peak time demand. Overall, having these on-site generation assets help companies or the asset owner in three ways. Improve overall reliability, reduce their energy cost, increase energy efficiency. In response, energy monitoring and control systems are becoming more advanced as well, so that they can accurately track what's happening from multiple sources as conditions change. And all of this is enabled by the Internet of Things, the growing connection of all type of devices and equipments because they are getting connected to the cloud. So this is actually a paradigm shift. The results is a major paradigm shift. And it's not like the difference between an old rotary dial phone that changes and became a modern smartphone. This is a major paradigm shift because in both ways, in a way we produce and also in a way we use electricity is changing. So this is a truly a paradigm shift. So if you look at and try to put these changes into a box, what is changing from single source power generation to multi-source, from centralized system to a decentralized, from carbon-based energy sources to decarbonized renewable source, from straight alternative current or in terms of AC system to hybrid alternating current or direct current systems, DC. 
from electromechanical devices to electromechanical and digital, from simple metering to full electrical distribution management. These paradigm shifts putting huge stress on everyone whose job is to ensure that light stays on. Especially because even while this system continues to grow and to evolve, we need to ensure that power distribution remains safe, reliable, and efficient, no matter what changes are underway. This is the basic fundamentals. So what does this mean? So we've seen how power distribution is changing in terms of generation and location of assets. But this development means there are changes within the building and facilities too. Traditional electrical distribution and power monitoring system won't be able to handle and the more dynamic and multi-directional nature of power. Unless we change what's happening inside the building between the service entrance and the final loads, the evolution of the power distribution system cannot realize its full, full potential. Of course, digitization is having major impact here as well. We are seeing five key digitization trends within facility. Number one, sensing or IoT explosion. We all know that IoT is a key to full realization of digitization. By connecting as many devices as possible, system can be truly optimized across entire scope of a business. Number two, increasingly autonomous building and industrial system. These systems will automatically and dynamically perform functions like optimizing a building asset and maintenance equipment and without direct human intervention. Number three, convergence of technical system within a facility with power distribution as the central backbone of a building infrastructure. We see a significant simplification of design, construction, operation and maintenance here. For everything from process system to energy management, we can bring as a central backbone. And the number five is the pervasive decentralization, expanding to system like manufacturing network to increasing flexibility and productivity. So this is the number four value that we see or the change we see. And my last point is on the changes to customer is the growth in mesh network. With continuously evolving communication technologies in traditional power system, you might see power line communication or ethernet. New wireless topographies like mesh networks are coming to the fore. These new type of communication networks are important because smart grid need fast, effective, two-way communication to function. So these are the key changes we see to the customers. With these tools, with digitizing and, and transformation, we can close the loop and eventually provide services. And we can do that through digital life cycle, ensuring consistency from design to commissioning and then operation through the digital twin to get the full value need to combine CAPEX and OPEX using these tools. We are over the complete value chain. Industry leaders have developed suits of products to enable just that end to end with the clear objective to make integration of services easier to cut or optimize CAPEX and OPEX. Focus on process industry through softwares this enable by focusing us by pushing us to focus scalable and strategic MA approach or by corporations or by partnerships. You do hear the key message is that in transformation you don't need to reinvent the wheel. This new world of energy offers system-wide efficiency, dividing energy losses by two. 
the existing energy system is around 60% in inefficient. Power generation and conventional fuel usage, for example, in transportation and industrial applications, has seen this type of losses. In the future, power generation moved to 100% renewable plus full electrification. The new energy scenario will benefit us in key many ways, but mainly two aspects I can bring today is CO2 emission will drop by 55%. Energy dependency and cost will improve drastically. Here, how the industry leaders helping their customers to start moving towards the today or the future of electrical distribution. Here we see it called Echo Structure Power, but which is simple IoT based LVMV energy management digital platform. Here, what this platform does is that instead of looking at the system in isolation, here we see the use of digital backbone to connect electrical distribution and power management asset into a single holistic vision of the entire power network within a facility. Really building on the potential of Internet of Things. This approach allows to connect everything from circuit breakers, switchboard, UPS, relays, so and so forth, even power quality mitigation equipments together and collect all the data into a powerful edge control software that offers unparalleled power management functionalities. And since this is digital, it allows us to identify and respond to issues much more quickly and more proactively. So you can stop problems before they become bigger. And because it's digital, you are also connected to a secure cloud-based apps and analytic and service layer. So you can get the advice and support of support you need whenever, wherever you need it. And I'm sure the next speaker that's following after me will elaborate this point further and more deeply. Get the slide moving. Okay. So the first step of action that we could do is that first step is really pretty simple. We need to use the power of digital and use any asset in a building or installation which is connectable. The electrical assets, the devices are no more down. They are smart and they are speaking and they can speak with valuable information. Second, no point of just spending money and having connected devices, make sure that is connected to a edge control layer where you can capture all those data. And then third, use those powerful analytics and app software services available for you to maximize the uptime, increase the efficiency, improve the safety and minimize the energy cost. There are a lot more complex action that can follow from here. But with these three simple actions, you'll build strong foundation for future power management. With these things in place, you can rest assured that you are ready to face both challenges and opportunities of the future. And even if I bring these points from the power distribution point of view, these are valid when we are driving a transformation in any industry. So we, what we can take away from this session is that as I come to my final slide, we know that world is changing, power is increasingly important and increasingly precious. And while there are challenges that face us together, utilizing the power of digitization, we can take hold of an entirely new paradigm shift to meet those challenges and secure the future. Within this paradigm, IoT-based platform for energy management delivers safer, more reliable, more efficient power for all of us. This transformation brings both peace of mind and significant financial benefit by designing, building, commissioning, and operating a tailored IoT-enabled and future-ready power solution that simply works. So it's not that you follow someone else's need. You can tailor for your need, that's the power of IoT and digital. 
And thanks for your attention. And over to you, John. If there's any questions, I'll be here. Thanks very much, uh, O'Neill. Um, there are a few things that I, I, I'd like to pick up on from, from there. So uh, firstly, I, thanks for showing the, um, the, the history of, of how power generation and distribution has gone, because as, as you point out, a bit of, over 100 years ago, the, uh, the electricity um, generation distribution um, <clears throat> architecture was uh infrastructure was was created with a um with the aim of of producing economies of scale so we had very large um very large power stations to produce electricity very efficiently uh high voltage transmission lines to transport the uh, the the power from where it's generated to where where the users are and then a distribution network and that while that has has served us well when when you have a handful of power stations um it, it makes sense to concentrate the um the uh the transmission network uh and uh and and subsequently the distribution but as as um as it's fragmented now uh we have perhaps uh even even before the current um digitalization of the network you had um, <clears throat> the emergence of uh, of gas powered um, uh, ga gas fired power stations that would help with uh, with um, peak peak demand uh, as opposed to the the old old style um, coal fired power stations that were took a long time to start up but they also took a long time to uh, to scale down so they, they were good for base load, but not necessarily for the peak load. Um, and as the the power generation network has, has fragmented, is also, I, I think also you, you mentioned that uh, even the consumers are sometimes generators because they when people have a, a solar panel, um, they, um, they, they might uh, consume during uh, the evening but they uh, generate during the, the day. And how that gets managed through throughout the network requires a, a different architecture from, from what went before. Um, what are some of the ways that um, organizations have, have started to manage this? Because we even see um, companies that are trying to reduce their carbon footprint um, put uh, invest in, in wind turbines, in solar panels, so that they are sometimes uh, a net consumer of, of power and sometimes a net producer. What, what are the sort of things that, um, that organizations need to think about when they, um, when they decide to embark on, on that, um, that two-way um, power, power distribution? Good question, John. So I would first, so with my experience, which I have seen is that I would first say that before you go and install new assets, which is, as you said, about renewable assets, you can already optimize and reduce the usage of energy in the existing installation. Because the technology has evolved so much, you don't need to replace the assets that's already in place. We are with the with sensors, with the plug and play, so much of fantastic innovation in small devices has come. And where you can turn your dumb electromechanical asset to a digital asset, a smart asset, then you need to invest on a, on a operating software, which is the H, H layer, to collect all the information where you can find when a machine is idling or machine machine is or an asset is working when there is no necessity so you can monitor all those things and you can really plan how the usage to make sure that you optimize the existing installation and then of course you can go into the other assets such as if you're really driven by the sustainability which i believe everyone is should be and 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 put in more greener uh, sources that can give us green energies and, and, and clear energy. And then 
in the past we could not see is that the, the, the monitoring, the uh, managing, maintaining all those things you need to put a, on top of the assets, you need to put a human capital as well, which today the devices and the, and thanks to digital, as I just said, on the platform we have, you can collect all those information because most of these platforms are open protocol. So it doesn't mean that it's closed and you need to have end-to-end -end full from one supplier or one service provider. You could collaborate, interoperate, and then you can scale it as well. You don't need to go full speed, full scale um, uh, suits and be, 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 go with a huge capex to kickstart. You can start simple and scalable. That's the most important thing. That, that's, um, that's an interesting um, corollary to what we think of in in IT, um, because uh, <clears throat> a lot of, lot of thinking about uh, uh, technology, I, IT architecture is is now um, to to break down monoliths into composable uh, pieces and to orchestrate those through communication between them. Um, can I ask you to actually bring up uh, your slide that showed these three three layers because there are some some interesting um, aspects that relate to uh, data. Yes, this this one. So here you've got um, you've got the uh, connected products uh, at the uh, at, at this this level, and lots of different devices uh, can be connected through sensors and actuators. <coughs> communicating back to do these uh this edge control software what are the sorts of um communication protocols do you see um for for that is it are they are they open communication uh protocols or are they more proprietary sort of uh, uh networks it's depending on the suppliers or the solution provider but i would i would say that uh, there are open protocols tcp ip uh, Ethernet, Profinet, um, Profibus, all type of uh, protocols are available, but more and more, all solution providers, uh, provide, uh, the suppliers would uh, push by to be open because we are living in a world of, uh, uh, you know, we need to collaborate and interoperate, uh, help the consumer. Otherwise, consumer need to run multiple platforms. It's not, it's not, it's not uh, helping uh, the cost. So, it has to be interoperable and open protocols. So I, I, I see more and more open protocols coming and and, and uh, there's no um, closed protocols like uh, like in 1990s, early 2000s. Okay, and, and the edge control layer, I think is, is interesting from a, um, from a technology standpoint because a lot of people uh, in the, the IT world will recognize, well, if we can get all this data back from from the sensors back to a, a data center a data warehouse a, a data lake then we can analyze it but in an, an engineering sense often uh, the conclusions that you make from from there are some there are some things that you want to analyze over time and get historical information about and see patterns but there are other things that need to happen in real time and this edge control layer is about the real time uh, control and acting on on information from from the sensors. To what extent do you see this is still being um, very requiring deep domain expertise in in this area? And and what can be more uh, generalized to um, to more IIT type of uh, uh, solutions? Yeah. So at, at today at the age is that. You can collect as much much data as possible that has been pushed from these devices through sensors and features, as you said. So it's pushed, and there are a lot of data which we call you. We hear this word called big data is nothing but too a lot of data. Then of course today you see that uh, the apps layer, the analytics layer, where you can customize, you can preload, and you can have you can generate uh, automatic uh, automated uh, dashboards. That is, you know, the data, even the same data, you need to be presented to key stakeholders differently. The maintenance engineer or the facility manager or the IT manager or the CFO or the CEO of the company, 
operations manager they they all doesn't want to see all the data and all of them are not interested on all the data they have specific needs and today if you have smart apps and analytics where you can translate this data that has been captured by the edge control to a decision making simple dashboard that's where the power of today where you can customize your reports your data to be presented to actionable decision making dashboards uh, that's that's a great insight because i think it it points to uh, the need the, the the linkage with um, marketing or, or design thinking and thinking about who is the the user what what is the user persona look like uh, whether it's uh, in in finance or whether it's at the operational end or whether it's at the um, uh, at, at the the executive level that is looking at, uh, at revenue generation um, so to in order to make the the best the best use out of uh, all this capability you need to think about uh, which users uh, what what you what each particular type of user is aiming to achieve and then bring the the right data to them to enable them to make uh, evidence-based decisions um, and that will further um, uh, that, that coincide with uh, their their role in in the organization so that's um, that's that's a great great insight there um, <clears throat> So in terms of that, then there, there also, as we've heard from earlier speakers in the, in the data sense, uh, there's a need for things like um, uh, understanding of data lineage and data quality and the governance of how the, the data is not just collected, but also is shared with other, with other people. So um, that, that structure I think is is pretty, although it's constructed from a, an engineering sense uh, within this uh, within this domain, it has uh, a direct relationship with how uh, how IT systems are being built now from the standpoint of um, <clears throat> the data lifecycle and uh, 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 sourcing sourcing data, transforming it. Uh, where necessary, and then distributing that data to the people who can use it to make uh, to make better uh, business decisions. Mm. Yeah, just just quick two points here. I'll come to this the previous topic that we were talking about, which is that's what I say that it's it's a customize. You can customize what you need as per the data you need. That's where today the electrical system from design is changed because you don't design a system and try to sell the design. You try to go and you try to understand the pain points of the customer and what's the problem that he wants to address or to bring solution. That's what is the beauty of today. You can customize this IoT platform. That, 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 that's very key, as you said, that it's it, it, it data point, the reference or the need is, is changed even within a one customer, stakeholders are having different needs. Now, um, uh, to your the, the, to your last point, uh, where you talk about, um, uh, uh, I just missed the point. Uh, sorry, I, uh, you are making a point, very important point. Uh, uh, the linkage with uh, the user persona, the design thinking, exactly. well, and yeah, yeah, ex exactly. So that that's that's also like you see a lot of things is that in, in 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 even for defining the needs of the user uh, persona and the need what we need to understand is when it's come people still feel that this data okay what are the data when, when when i speak in the electrical infrastructure domain i mean this is just electrical data the more we can collect the data the more we can share the data the power of data can bring you the financial and efficiency benefits are immense so the more you share, and then if you cannot translate this information to a decision making to the certain personas, then it's useless, right? So you need to make sure that important thing is to collect as much as possible, then have that ability to customize this data to present to pers different stakeholders, personas, so that this data is becoming relevant. Great. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much for those uh, those great insights, O'Neill. 
that's um, and that's a perfect uh, intro into our, 